Ralph, really happy to welcome welcome you back to the show, man. And I swear we didn't draw it up this way. It just worked out. But the day we're scheduled to have our Fox Sports NFC East writer on, a whole bunch of NFC East news pops up in the news cycle Monday morning. So let's get into it. It's very fitting. For starters, the Philadelphia Eagles now have one of the, well, the best, but also the most expensive wide receiver duos in the NFL they signed Devontae Smith to a three-year extension, $75 million. I think I saw $51 million guaranteed. The money, to me, it's slightly interesting, but what makes it more interesting to me and more impressive is that the Eagles were able to get this done as early as they were and get you know a star receiver under contract after just his third season in the NFL. Yeah, this this is what the Eagles do, and it's why they're able to sort of sustain their greatness or their ability to compete for playoffs and, and Super Bowls and whatever. Uh, they like to sign guys ahead of time, and players want to sign ahead of time with them. I mean, when you look at Devonta Smith, they've locked him up now through 2028. Uh, you know, they, they picked up his fifth-year option, gave him three more years on top of that. Uh, the extension's worth $25 million a year that makes him right now that average for those three years makes him the, uh, I think it's tied with A.J. Brown for fourth highest paid receiver in the league. There's a good bet that had he hit free agency in a couple of years, that this contract would look small. You know, I mean, receiver salaries keep going up like crazy. So maybe it would be $30, $35 million a year then. But he took a chance on them, said, I want to stay here. I want to be part of this organization. They gave him a very fair deal. Um, you know, they've done it with so many players over the years and so many players, it seems, this offseason, um, you know, to make sure they keep having that core locked up and are an attractive destination. Uh, you know, it's I keep saying this over and over. It's why I think Harry Roseman is the best GM in the league, because uh, he's not afraid to take those chances. He's not afraid to, you know, to lock up his guys early when he thinks he has value. And I feel like people get tired of me harping on it, but I think it's such a key to get these deals done early because I, I just said it. The extension is for $25 million a year, but when you combine that with what's left on Smith's rookie deal, you're talking about a way lower average salary per year. It makes it way more manageable to deal with those cap hits. I think when people look at the Eagles and say, how do they keep doing this? It's stuff like that where the earliness with which you get this done makes you more flexible in the big picture. No question about it. And, you know, look, other teams would like to do that as well. You have to have a player who's willing to sign early and not intent on waiting and to see if they can somehow, uh, you know, set the market in a couple of years. Uh, you know, obviously they built a good culture. They built a winning program. All of that helps. Um, and they're willing to go the extra mile. Instead of looking at Devonta Smith's contract and thinking, well, we've got two more years left and, you know, it's reasonable and a low cost, they think, you know what, let's add to that. Let's 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 give him an incentive to stay here. And, you know, again, if you do that with enough players, people start to look at it and go, you know, I, I'd like to stay here too. I want to be part of it. Stealing this from my buddy Benjamin Solak at the ringer, but it just goes to show, you touched on it too, Ralph, of just how many deals the Eagles – have gotten done here over the last couple of years. So they now have the fourth highest paid quarterback in Jalen Hurts, fourth highest paid running back in Saquon Barkley, the fourth and fifth highest paid receivers, A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith. Dallas Goddard is the fifth highest paid tight end. Lane Johnson and Jordan Mailata are the fourth and fifth highest paid offensive tackles. Did I miss anybody? Oh, yeah, I did. Uh -huh. Landon Dickerson is the highest paid guard in the NFL. It's impressive the amount of resources they've committed to this roster. And we were talking about this before we started recording. Now it, it feels like now you've got a two to three year window to hit on all of this because eventually this will become a problem. Just maybe not right now. Yeah, you would think so. Right. Um, you know, I know there's, we could do a, a business seminar on the void years and the different things that uh, Howie Roseman has factored into these contracts to make it actually workable. It's question I get asked all the time is, you know, do the Eagles even have a salary cap? How do they do this when other teams can't? You would think eventually down the line, there are going to be issues for this team. But, you know, a couple of things that I think that the Eagles are not afraid of is one, they're not afraid of these salary cap issues because they know the salary cap is going to keep going up. Obviously, if revenues around the league ever decrease and the salary cap starts to go down, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. 
Uh, but the salary cap has been jumping, uh, is projected to jump even more in future years. And I'm sure they've built that into their thinking. And the other thing is, I think they just believe we'll figure it out when we get there. Uh, you know, they've built in ways for them in most of these deals where if they get three or four years down the line and, you know, something has to be adjusted, they trust that they'll adjust with that player and make it more cap friendly. And, you know, I don't know, maybe Howie Rose thinks, Howie Roseman thinks that, uh, hey, in five, six years, that'll be somebody else's problem. I want to win now. Even if that was his attitude, I think most of the fans would take, yeah, you know, don't tell me about five years from now. I want to win now. And he's building a team that over the next three years should be in that position because they have a lot of of best players in the at their position locked up to deals. It's easy for me to say this because I don't have any skin in the game. Like my my job is not on the line if this goes poorly. But I just can't, I can't stop thinking about the fact that Howie Roseman has he's already been through the ups and downs of this already. You know, they they put a Super Bowl team together. It was full of veteran stars, big contracts. A couple years later, they absolutely bottomed out to the point that they had to trade their big money quarterback away. They had to let several guys walk. They went 4-11 and 1. Remember, you know, Doug Peterson walked away at the end of that season. It was a disaster. And then immediately after that, they've built a team that's been to the playoffs three straight years, played in a Super Bowl, and looks like they're going to be contenders for several more years to come. I will take that 4-11-1 bottoming out every single time if you've got a shot to do this five out of every six years. No question. It's the, the myth sort of of rebuilding in the NFL. A lot of times you hear about a team needing to take a step back, and you think, well, they're going to have to take a step back for two to three years. Not necessarily anymore. Not if you do this right. Not if you've built your team the right way. Uh, you could have that one season of bottoming out and get right back into the thick of contention. And I think there's a lot of leagues that a lot of teams around the league that look at what the Eagles did and how quickly they were able to retool and think, well, we could do that too. Now, keep in mind that there are still some that that core four having those guys from one Super Bowl championship to the to the next Super Bowl run certainly is a help. You've got to draft well to replenish your depth. You've got to be able to, you know, the the bottom feeding free agent signings that you make have to work out for the most part. That's not always the case with the Eagles, but they do a generally good job. You have to be smart football players, football people to make that work and get the right players. So it's not as simple as they sometimes seem to make it look. But um, I think a lot of other teams look at it and think, you know, you can do this quicker. You can bounce back from the bottom quicker if you do it the right way. And that, and like I said, the other part of that is having an owner in Je- Eagles owner Jeffrey Lurie let Howie Roseman hang al- hang around long enough to fix those mistakes. So I get it if not every GM wants to be that trusting of his ownership, but in a vacuum, it's hard to see the downside with being aggressive when you see how quickly you can fix your mistakes. No now, question, no question. The fans down there love it too. 